Oh, Power Glide, the man who never stands down, now taken by the love of a human girl. Two worlds, one family! I can't judge you, you're only listening to your heart. But can you talk to Hound for a bit because he's scaring Spike? Bold, daring, and just a pure darling, Power Glide is unique in the many bots for his rather indifferent shape and that he was a rare early instance of an actual full-fledged flying Autobot without the assistance of flight tech. He may be small, but that should help his mover ability in the air. For any reason he can get, he'll take flight and show off his slick moves. On the ladies, that is. <laughs> Impressive enough, his name was mentioned on an original title for an episode of the original cartoon infamously named The Girl Who Loved Power Glide, where a young naive girl and Power Glide recreate married with children. Hey, it was the 80s, bug off. In the 2015 Combiner Wars line, Power Glide comes back in full. Let's take a look at this Legends class figure. Before we dive into the alt mode, let's check a look at the weapon mode. You might remember this in the Superion review where I quickly threw it in. So what's the point? point of this, other than making one of the best Autobots out there into a gun, why argue with that? Well, each combiner was connected to a Legends class toy in some way. Armor, weapons, or Rekard just being there. Being a flying Autobot in red, he seemed to fit right in. It's not essential to the combiner, you can use it with other figures, but the weight might prove difficult to work with. Although Siege seems to be fine. Oops, I accidentally found another reason to love Hound. Oh. As a weapon, it's fine. Leg joints aren't connected to anything, so whoopsie, but it holds enough. The thrusters are used as blasters, however, I appreciate the added missiles on the side, because all guns need this! And there's also a blue screen on top to play Top Gun Fire at Will. Landing gear is used as a handle, but because it's not perfectly round, some of the hands are... <laughs> you know, some say if you listen close to the missile rack, you can hear Cybertron Thundercracker going ape shit. Again, not an essential part of the toy, but it doesn't break the mold except for the added detail. Completely acceptable, but we're not here for this. Just a few steps and Paraglide transforms into a plane resembling an A-10 Thunderbolt, somewhat based on the classic toy. I gotta say, the proportions for this guy is pretty slick until you get up close to the imperfections. Given it's a Legends class figure, I'm not gonna scream in terror over this. However, I wish the legs were more stable, the taps are weak, and the knees are left to bend out of place. There are certain gems to admire, the intentional line work for the panels and the jet boosters. Take note, you slide the top ones down in this form. Don't push the hard door. Oh no. The cockpit is on point with the black paint and the mini gunner is both dangerous and adorable. Love the bend to the wings too. And yeah, he can punch you. So what? Do something about it. I dare you. You can just use the missiles, but then you miss out on the fist and you don't want that. Attach some guns and fuck up some Decepticons. Fold up landing gear on the front and the back has molded in wheels. The wings on the back don't really stick in place and well, the entire bag needs a few more tabs. Doesn't ruin the toy, but a lot of things fall out of place. As long as you don't! Just don't. Not perfect, but the sheer sight of Paraglide in the size brings me enough joy that every nitpick shoves off. Robot mode. explain the transformation in one word, it would just be... right. If you told me they were making a modern day power glide based on the original toy rather than... whatever this experiment was, this is exactly how it would be. In short, Hasbro did a good. Jetting away from his ridiculous forever Peter Griffin Pilgrim's joke pose, Paraglide's aesthetic is a well-earned update, giving him proper movement, nice shaping, a big oh. Autobot symbol, and who you calling a pinhead? Seems smaller in proportion compared to his original toy, but unmistakably characteristic with the cone helmet, colors, and without a doubt recognizable face structure with stern eyes hiding the emotion inside. Too bad this thing on the back makes the head hard to turn, otherwise whoo! Did someone say, articulation? Head rotation. Ball joint shoulders, elbow bend, ball joint hips, ball joint knees, and hinge feet. Joints are serviceable enough, but if there's one thing lacking, I wish there was a rotation joint to bring out the arms. Would make it manageable for hugs. While charming, it's fascinating to see Power Glide come from a doofy G1 toy to this generation style, keeping the head shape, colors, and classic recognizable wings making the side of the torso. But don't judge a book by its cover because this is also Captain Wingman. Paint's pretty limited aside from the red and dirty brown, but there's some silver and blue 
glue on the crotch. Hey, eye contact. Nice rocket boots, but I think AOE Prime is out to get them. Of course, he needs no guns, though just lift up his arms and this is why the neighbors don't come over. Targeting system, activate. Power Glide is pretty simple, but in the outright perfect scale, I'm glad to see this minibot join the ranks of this class updated for the generation's theme. And aside from the weapon mode that's pretty much just a bonus, this is exactly what I wanted in the basic form. I'd say if you can get Power Glide, get him. This is one of my favorite minibots, and the dedicated to making this work and the joy it brings is great not perfect but well designed a misunderstood little bot but with the heart made from light brights and hey everyone's beautiful but peak body perfection are you ready for a bombshell bombshell bugs are gross that's as one of the original and commonly known creepy crawly Decepticons called the Insecticons, perfect name given that they're insects, mind blowing right? Bombshell has a rather sick hobby of manipulating people in mind controlling, making them do whatever he pleases, from terrible pranks to absolute torment. I think we found another p with his cynical way to play with his victims, Bombshell is a nasty creature with no remorse. Does the figure do it justice? Bombshell transforms into a beetle, and if I ever see a live one in this size, I move into another part of the globe. For Bombshell, I'll make an exception if he doesn't roll crap on my carpet. Beyond the gross origins, this insect is a beefy hunk of a hard shell with lots of smooth round shapes that'll make the submarines cat call. Check out the iconic re-engineered horn with nostril blasters with a bonus horn on top, big Decepticon logo on top, and conventional eyes that see in every direction at the same time. You can't escape his sight. Some red vent details that look like heaters and pegs on the back for... Honestly, I'm not sure. His new mold Wavemate Power Glide was given the weapon mode treatment. Makes you wonder if they were gonna do the same here. There's no official mode and the pegs are just shy of 5mm, but his hands seem to have barrels that you can flip forward. I guess it's just the conspiracy lost to question. I demand to know! Despite the creepy legs, I feel they could have gone creepier. I mean, it's a Decepticon bug, the potential to go all out nasty is there. I'm sure there's a comic, but that might take away from the bulbous raw build and you don't want that, do you? Really, the only thing I don't like is that it doesn't hold together well. Waist joint doesn't lock in and the arms only hold onto each other for support. So if you mess with it, generally you mess with it. Otherwise, Bombshell makes a pretty good insect, eye-poppingly bulky compared to his brothers and a very obvious strong presence. Robot mode. Bombshell doesn't take a lot to transform, but that just means we can get right into the party because there's some good things going on. Feeling slimmed down by comparison to the alt mode, there's still a round hard surface to the parts that make him look tougher than the rest. That is if you can get past the bug legs. Vomit. Heads borderline hearts of steel with a huge cow catcher almost giving him a huge taunting smirk and beady red eyes behind a black head. Good shaping, but uh... It doesn't move. This might be due to the horn sticking out of the back like he's Emperor of the Bugs. But I don't understand why he couldn't get a joint in the torso to at least give us something. Lost opportunity. Did someone say articulation? Ball jointed shoulder, ball joint elbow, waist rotation, ball jointed hips, rotation below, and knee joint. The lack of the head joint sucks balls, but the surprising waist joint helps shift the focus side to side. The individual insect legs can move out of the way, even the ones pinned in the legs are separated. Too bad they don't tab in because they're just left to wiggle and distract you while you're trying to get a decent pose. And knee guns. No complaints here. You also get what looks like blasters over the fist, much like Rook, but you can't attach a weapon. If you're wondering why they did this, please don't ask stupid questions. I even like the back detail with the magic 8-ball installed. And why are these buttons on his tummy for? It looks like Darth Vader. And bonus, you'll get a butterfly joint. Good baby on a gravy. This is a good bombshell. He doesn't get his name for being a wussy pants. He's a tough bug to squish. And why would you, except... Bugs are gross. Simple and not perfect, there are certain quirks they could have improved, but for a cheap figure, this works just fine. Just don't call them a bug, they're very against discrimination.
mind this. <laughs> Going off the legacy of Generation 1 and seeing how we already got a tailgate in the IDW Generations line, we figured another Wind Charger was coming, despite the fact we already have one from Reveal the Shields. But it doesn't stop there. A little while longer and we have another Wind Charger in Power of the Primes, much closer to the recognized shape. Well... Options are good at least. Wind Charger can accelerate to impressive speeds immediately, but will just as quickly stop to investigate something of interest and to post it on Instagram. But what makes him stand out was his ability to control electromagnetics and become Discount Magneto. While evoking sneaky traits of a Pontiac, Wind Charger transforms into a custom-made muscle car, and with a dark red, it provokes an aggressive tone. I'm sure someone's stepdad drives this. What's with the prolapse of piping on the back? Four exhaust just sticking out without a care. Probably got some paint chips from other cars, but why should he care? The side profile shows the slim canopy for wind resistance, but the rest of him feels like he could pack a punch. Odd because he's just a tiny mini bot, but I'm not arguing. There are some things to admire and some consistency, but he's also a little bland. There's some paint on it, but the majority remains this molded dark red all around. At least Tailgate had some blue flames for a kick, but he does have an exposed engine section thanks to the new head. Still keeping the peg hole, however. Small, but better than nothing. Wind, wind resistant down to the spoiler. Char Charger, engine of a charging bull. Wind, charger, fits the bill enough. I think just a minor stripe on the side would have been fine, but considering his origins, I get why he looks like this. I think there's at least a consistency and rage that shouldn't be overlooked, though easily can be. Robot mode. Transforming into robot mode is easier than the other way around. You have to line things up and make sure things get out of the way. But getting into robot mode, he's a strong meh. The size is fine, lining up with the class, and there's some advantages over the Reveal the Shields toy, like using the proper chest. However, there's a good flow to the first draft and pretty enjoyable gimmicks. This is just shapes. Hey, can you hear me over the tiny head? The molding is great and the paint job is very well done, but why is it so small teetering to the MicroMasters? You also have to move the backpack in order to rotate, but hey, it turns. Did someone say, or did you say shit? Head rotates, ball joint shoulders, ball joint elbows, ball joint hips, ball joint knees, and feet joint. Articulation is alright when the shoulders and backpack get out of the way. I don't even mind the waist not tapping into place. Easier for the extender charger. And how can I forget those damn sexy legs? Oh, God! There's just something really off about how large his arms are in comparison to the thin legs, tiny head, and chest. Yet, here's where things get confusing. For a while, I was curious what made it work for Tailgate and not Windcharger. Taking out the other two superior Windchargers, I think I figured it out. Tailgate is based out of his respective comic art, so we kind of know where he's coming from. His head is absolutely out of the norm with the large cartoon eyes showing his adorable and emotional side. Top that with the color scheme, and while he has the same body shape, it feels playful. Windcharger's head, shrunken like Beetlejuice, just looks so simple, average, stern, and plain. Top that with a more mild deco with a dark gray torso and red color scheme, it feels like it's not sure what it wants to be. Reveal the Shields went for an enjoyable warrior toy, Power of the Primes 1 G1 theme, with a mild feel that surprisingly works. The Combined Wars has a conflicting aesthetic that puts him behind the pack. It doesn't break the mold enough to justify the purchase, but if he wants to be a leg model, then he's got an advantage. You can also flip these side panels around to your liking, and if he's over a red wall, you can turn him around and he disappeared! I wasn't sure what to say about this, as I wasn't clear why this wind charger just doesn't interest me enough, even without the consideration of the other two, hoping what I'm saying is clear and understood. This isn't a bad toy, I mean it's just a red tailgate, but what worked for him doesn't continue here. And though the Reveal the Shields toy is hard to find, with the introduction of Power of the Primes, I'm not sure you need this. It's not bad, if you're struggling trying to find a wind charger, this can fill the spot, but I don't imagine anyone feeling this is too important to not miss out on. Ah, uh, hold up, is that the head of a tiny Megatron? What is this? Some people might think Acid Storm is my favorite seeker, but what you don't know is 
there is another. Skywarp fans, sorry not sorry. Part of the original Seeker Squad before they were even called that, Thundercracker believes the sky is his domain, and that he rules against the ground dwellers. He'll even attack them just for being filthy flightless parasites. Although with his loud demeanor that'll make the neighbors call for a noise complaint, strangely he has shown sympathy towards humanity, but would rather keep it to himself. He even befriended the best character in Transformers, Buster the Dog. Ready to roar into action, how does the toy do? The third repaint to the line, although it was going to be in place of Acid Storm before plans changed, Thundercracker's mold comes from the IDW theme Starscream, in that the design of the jet is based on IDW concept, this time featured in the classic dark blue. The shape feels like a blend of the more recent F-22, but there's a sense of the reshaped recognized trait of the original F-15. While repaint hatred seems to be a thing, Thundercracker and Skywarp are the common exception. This tradition has broken over the years, but this isn't a surprise. Seeing another rendition of the dark blue seeker makes me happy that the world still hasn't forgotten this lovable hunk. The paint job pattern mostly follows the other seekers with a single stripe of white in front of a rageful red because with a name like Thundercracker you've got to make some noise. In addition there's a gold cockpit and a line of silver giving them some pop just to make sure that you're keeping up with the rest of the class. Fold up landing gear on the front though watch the snoop for droop and no race on the side that you can remove but why would you? This is embarrassing. Also his face is at the bottom so he can scowl and mock at those on the ground or keep an eye on Buster. Also you can attach a weapon on the top including power glide but uh good luck flying. Thundercracker may be basic in retrospect but we've come to accept it and almost admire how the simple things can work. Robot mode. <laughs> Such a simple transformation, but Thundercracker looks amazing. Kind of curious why some secret molds get things wrong. It seems very basic when you think about it. Seeing the silver over the dark blue and black gives him enough life, but provokes a dark tone that feels absolutely perfect for the Decepticon role. Just wish the nips were painted. I like my painted nips. Don't judge me, I just like George Clooney Batman. Head's got some good molding and decent paint for its size, though no head articulation? Huh, same with Bombshell. I guess the Decepticons didn't deserve to look beside them in this wave. But which one of you pissed someone off? Wow, a smaller head than Windcharger. Did someone say, Articulation! Ball jointed shoulders, ball joint elbows, ball joint hips, hinged knees, and heels and toes move. It's not impossible to pose, but feels overly restricted. A basic standing pose works just fine, but try for something dynamic, and you'll have to adjust with only so much wiggle room. Thundercracker comes with the classic null rays, which can plug into the hands with an average peg, but look further and and the smaller peg can attach to the shoulders nice and safely. Flops around a little too much, but should get the job done. You also get bonus leg fins so he can be Aquaman. I guess that's why he's so blue, because he, he cries a lot. I have to admire the detail when you lift up the cockpit. Doesn't need it, but the extra level of inner workings is fantastic. Right down to the semi-truck grill in his stomach. I'm happy to say on my copy the wings seem tighter and actually lock into place, which alternatively was an issue with my acid storm. However, this shoulder doesn't really lock in well, so still shamed. The figure is simple enough. It doesn't do anything offensive, but the fact we can come back to this guy and that they're still making him is a pleasure. While some might have a different seeker in mind, Thundercracker always takes the top spot. And I'm glad to have it in one of my favorite classes in generations. Won't stand up to your deluxes, but then you're missing the point. Keep in mind, he's banned from every library. This Optimus Prime, I heard you were taking the steroids! Wait till left try and here's about this! A lawful peacekeeping protector and a machine with a passion for all that is right. Fighting for justice, Robocop is a film. What's there to say? Optimus Prime is the leader of the Autobots, looked up to as he conquers the evils of the Decepticons, no matter the cost, but you already knew that, didn't you? In addition with the line of Combiner Wars Voyager figures, Optimus Prime combines to form Ultra Prime. With that, how's the toy? Optimus Prime transforms into a red and blue semi-rig 
like that has the ideal iconic shape, but the truck looks like somehow almost the same truck as Galvatron. I guess this is KSI's general concept. Why can't we make what we want to make the way we want to make it? If you fit everything in correctly, like the combiner head and waist that folds up, and tab everything together right, including the side tabs where the red and blue meet, and the panel on the side cab in the middle, the result is a red and blue blob with the force of Chuck Norris. Does anyone do Chuck Norris jokes anymore? The paint job is some of the worst I've seen for an Optimus Prime Generations toy. So much remains unpainted and looks like Lego blocks, and what is painted is completely broken. These side windows, the grill section, and the front window is cut off by this horrid gray vomit. I would be fine with everything but this <laughs> shit! At least the smokestacks are painted and he's got a big logo on top, but see, the Unite Warriors Takara version actually has an idea of what it's doing. The side joints on the windows is also unpainted, but at least the red recolor is consistent to something. You can fold down this blue garbage to make it more consistent, but just when you thought you fixed it, the feet. Oh, why? Oh, and you can bring down the legs for it. That. Check it out. You see the fists at the bottom? Well, you can attach the weapons and this isn't right. You can attach the weapons to the trailer hitch, specifically molded for only these weapons. However, it doesn't hold well. The two further up properly support both pieces and even create some sort of engine block. It's just a blur blob of a prime. There's nothing really outstanding about it, but I'll say it's at the very least solid. And other than the distracting side of the windows, it's not offensive, just very boring. Robot mode. This is odd. This Optimus Prime toy is very out there, changing up and reshaping what has been there since the beginning, but it just ends up being mush peas. I'll simplify what I'm referring to. It's kind of like having all the ingredients to bake a cake, and so you decide, why not? Let's work with what we've got. So you're mixing everything together, it starts to smell nice, but then you puke in it, and then you say, nah, it's meant to look like that. I mean, I'll eat it, but I won't like it that much. With its bulbous blocks, inconsistent angles, and wiring going everywhere, some of the detail is a nice introduction, but it just ends up looking like blobs and blocks. I mean, look how wide the chest is and how big the arms are. It's like someone trying to do a cosplay of Optimal getting a truck mode and so they just grabbed a bunch of boxes. The head looks oddly round, it feels more out there, but I love the design for the battle mask. Again, the ingredients are there and it's probably the best part of the design. However, I heard there's a risk of snapping the tiny stem of the ball joint, so probably best just to look, don't touch. Did someone say, Art together shit? Ball jointed head, shoulders forward and back, out and in, rotation below, elbow joint, waist rotation, hips out and in, forward and back, rotation below, and knee joint. Most of the joints are fine, but the ratchet and the hips feel like they're going to break. Honestly, I'm surprised they haven't. But the knees are... Fuck off! They suck donkey hoof as they limbo to the party. They're also so bland, uninteresting, and why is the feet gray? Does he love this color so much he dipped his feet in paint? With the majority of the body being silver and gray and the big metallic blue titters, there's a huge lack of red that makes him look pretty dull, and... Are those pre-applied stickers? Oh no, the Toys Voyagers enough after Combiner Wars had this infection. Is this the precursor? Optimus includes two weapons, one similar to his Ion Blaster and the other looks like a pipe he's playing with. The detail suggests the pipe fits better on the specific hand, but the glaring red peg reaches long enough to switch. You can stack the weapons on top of each other to make... Well, no one said Optimus Prime engineered weapons. They can also attach front to back, but there's a reason for it. Because of the classes at the time, Voyager Optimus Prime looks so incredibly short to Megatron. I don't mind Megatron being taller, but this is just sad. I'm guessing they wanted to introduce a new Optimus Prime for this Prime Wars trilogy, so they took Motor Master and made a pre-released remold. With that, and the fact Voyagers are all combiner torsos in the line, let's take a look at the combine mode.
In combined mode named Ultra Prime, I decided to use the entire Wave 1 Deluxe figures as seen in promotional images. Yes, this includes drag strip, have a fit. I think it needs more paint applications. I mean, look at these chunks of blurs. But there's something good about its look. I just think it's vastly more interesting than the other modes. Though, a little short and wide looking by its appearance. Where did his titters go? There's a bulbous empty cavity on the torso, but you can open up to reveal poorly made ports for the blackjack mold, bumblebee visor hieroglyphics, and what looks like the spark of combination from Energon. Also the spark of bad taste in my mouth. God, I'm I don't mind changing things up and the head sculpt is fantastic. Really intriguing with the adjustable tall ears and head crest. Also that face is on serious mode. Hey Megatron, careful who you bully in middle school. There's a ball jointed head, hinge joint, regular Combiner Wars arms, legs out and in, skirt moves out of the way, forward and back, and the same Combiner Wars joints in the lower legs. <laughs> You can also combine the gun for an extended ion blaster. Ridiculous, but completely acceptable. And I do appreciate the tabs and the shoulders actually holding together. Menasaur, why can't you do better? Optimus Prime is recognizable, but the changes feel uninspiring and dull. Other than the combined mode, which is a nice idea, there's other Optimus Prime figures that actually feel like a good improvement. If you like it, it's not the worst thing, could argue if it's really a bad figure in general. But there's nothing amazing and the unavoidable issues really makes this figure feel like the effort, if any, was wasted. But I'm sure there's something to like, even as just a basic toy to play around. If you're fine with the steroid enraged leader, I don't care what you call yourself, I don't care what your friends are doing, you will need a helmet for bowling. Completely ignorant, self-indulgent, and stubborn, Hardhead is a soldier to his core, and with that pride, he tends to rely on his own path out of a situation, rather than take the advice of his comrades. Duros? Doros? Darren? Deros. The Nebulon turned headmaster component always entitled himself to fighting a war and found his more calm world boring until Hardhead stepped in and the two shared a passion and bond. The pair was the first of the four main Autobots to be reintroduced into the new generation sub theme and reunites in the Titans Returns toy line. With that, let's take a look at the toy. The headmaster or Titan Master, uh huh, the Titan Master. Deros is a basic little figure in similar colors to the main hardhead. Green for the limbs and head, gray for the torso with some yellow and blue for the face. The eyes are super tiny so appreciate it. And yeah, the head's on the back but it's too small and with the different heads, what are you gonna do? Ball jointed head, ball joint shoulders but not much going out, and the legs are molded together with two joints. In the usual gimmick during Titans Returns, the legs have little gaps, a tab acting as a singular heel, and two tiny holes on the feet that help it attach to canopies, certain random spots, and adapt into to some of the weapons. There's not much else to say, so let's throw them in. Hardhead transforms into a futuristic tank in the H style, with two sets of treads on both sides. I've noticed figures like Warpath and Megatron will do this. It kind of feels like a cop-out to do a clean square vehicle, but Hardhead was like this from the beginning. Seems like we're on good ties. Now. The front treads don't like to stay too well, but they don't usually touch the flat surface of the ground unless you're... <laughs> He's supported by the two wheels on the back and the one in the front that's friction tapped in. It works as well as you think, so not really. Look at the canopy, poppingly colorful in transparent orange and a perfect fit for any Titan Master passenger. There's also a smaller canopy on the front section, but what's that for? Is it A, the driver, B, the cannon operator, and C, who cares, I wanna watch cat videos. You're stupid, but I don't blame you. How can I stay mad at that face? Tough. Flat and wide, just how I like them. Wonderfully detailed all over the place as opposed to the original flat look. And hey, is that a massive turret? Hmm, I believe so. This is incredibly bonanzas! Just imagine the force behind this, probably decimate entire species in one blast! Sits comfortably down, but with the hinges you can move it up and even cheat with the little rotation. You can also port the additional weapon, like it needs it, and add Titan Masters to the opening. You can sit one in the front and put 
a second one here, but that's awkward. And yes, that's the clip for the Titan Master. You can add the head here if you want to, I won't ask why. You can even fold up the legs, turn it around, and hey, extra turrets, but not. My biggest issue is the feet should have locked in. They stay all right, but it's not hard to flop out. Hardhead is a stoic brute that's not taking any orders. Just let him loose and the chaos ensues. Robot mode. <laughs> Hardhead is perfectly fitting with his chunky arms, chest poking out like Captain America, and boxy head thanks to the little guy. You know, when I say there's a little guy in my head, people say I'm crazy. Is it just me, or do the legs seem long and thin? Just picturing a character like this, it seems out of place. I mean, I'm happy with the treads, makes it appear aggressive, and I'm happy with the feet that actually click in. Also, appreciate the core protected by the canopy. Nice touch. The port has a little wiggle, but damn, the boxy helmet surrounding the slick shades and yellow battle mask gives him a tough appearance, but thankfully, it's not too frightening. Uncle Hardhead wants you. Did someone say, articulation? Ball jointed head, hinge joint, ball joint shoulders, rotation below, double joints for the elbow, wrist rotation, ball joint hips, rotation below, and hinge knee. Posing is fine, however, I feel like some of the joints should have been tightened. Almost half of them feel like they have too much give that I'd prefer. Let's take a look at the weapons. While the original came with two, this new edition only comes with one of the light green rifles. Doesn't really affect me. I mean, two would be cool, but I think the gun is fair enough. And why is the town running with fear? Oh yeah, a big giant turret. Don't know how I can miss that. It can fold up for the back for storage or right over the shoulder for it. Don't make me mad. I don't even have to turn green. You can even attach the other gun for Expendables 3 Director's Edition. You can open up the crotch for minutes of solitary humor. And for a soldier, he's got such tiny Autobot symbols. Oh. If you want to go for a bigger hardhead, there's a KO, there's a third party, or get the Universe Classics Onslaught repaint. But as is and working with his brothers, I'm perfectly fine with this. It was early in the line, so not everything's perfect, but I really do enjoy him. He still, to this day, is my favorite of the original Headmasters, and that hasn't changed one bit. However, I can't recommend a cannon this close to your ears. What? Oh, you think, hey, I'm Walgreens. I'm gonna make exclusive toys that are going to be limited to certain locations. Well, who's laughing now? Hopefully the audience. Brainstorm, also known on the TF Wiki as Gene or Sharon, is the smartsy MacGyver of his 18 Headmaster members. Always coming up with ideas, throwing caution out the window just to work on the next brilliant project. His Headmaster, formerly Arcana, renamed Tesla for the Titans Returns, is also a pretty bright bulb to the point where Brainstorm can't even catch up. But it's okay because even the guy in his mind doesn't know what Brainstorm is hiding in his briefcase. Probably a glove. This version of the toy was... Frustratingly, a Walgreens exclusive, a store that's not around here. I mean, the Voyager was hard enough to get. So I have to give a big thanks to Larry Arts Production for sending this out. I really do appreciate it. The Titan Master Tesla comes in similar colors to the main figure, with his cyan color in the limbs and head, gray in the torso, and orange covering the face. Stop drinking so much Sunny D. The D stands for Dozen Paul. Basic articulation as usual with the head, shoulders, and legs, face on the back, watch in every <laughs> corner, and attachments in the legs. What else is there to say? Brainstorm transforms into a futuristic jet with an extended nose. The slope, smooth texture, and coloring is a much better representation compared to the blocky original. Oh, did I criticize the original toy? Oh. Check out the intake, seemingly going straight through the back right down to the thrusters. The sleek nose cone followed by a smooth, wind-resistant shape led by a couple of blasters. While the wings are super small, the blasters are a nice addition. For a smart guy, he'd be packing some heat. But open up the canopy and you'll find a really nicely made seat to fit the Titan Master. Though, if he drops his phone, he's screwed. Okay, imagine this, and I apologize if you can't unsee this, but would this make the perfect alt mode for a Cybertronian Trax? Am I crazy? There's three tiny wheels, and you can attach the smaller weapon to the bottom. The main front section can't be removed, making things look kind of weird, but flip out the stand, plop in the Titan Master, and this is awkward. <laughs> 
Brainstorm Zalt Mode is genius in its sleek look, but questionable by the tiny wings. However, I'll take a guess and imagine he knows exactly what he's doing. Robot Mode! <laughs> I gotta admit, I really love the style of Brainstorm. The colors and mold feels young, spry, and wonderfully energetic. I think it just needs a splash of cyan in the limbs, but honestly it looks better than the cartoonish Takara figure, maybe even better than the three-pack, but that might be a biased opinion, and this is automatically better because I have it. This might be stylized like stickers, but they're painted on and gives the legs a little more depth. Feel slightly out of place, but the wings are fantastic. Really appreciate the effort. As well, that Autobot symbol sneaking inside the canopy. You can't hide. The face is wonderful, with the tall ears, blue curious eyes always thinking, and the orange mouth play to give it that extra oomph. Did someone say, articulation? Ball jointed head, shoulders out and then forward in the back, rotation below, elbow bend, wrist rotates, waist rotates, ball joint hips, rotation below, knee bend, and a hinge at the feet. I feel the torso's too long and needs an ab crunch, but the waist articulation really helps. Also, the wings can adjust for that little bit of attitude. Who said smart guys aren't sexy? Let's take a look at some weapons. Where are they? Oh, they're right here! You can attach everything onto the back and use some pegs on the side. You get sled weapon mode. Originally, the two gunners could detach to form two blasters, but maybe due to the blur remold, it's all set on one side with a combined shield. You also get a little blaster, so while this is different, different isn't bad. You can plug weapons to the side of the arms and the hands because it is only logical. Also, why the fuck not? All grown up and mocking the bullies with his success, Brainstorm is proof that the smart guys can and have it all! Awesome alt mode, and while the robot might be simple, it really does nothing wrong, and it's enjoyably fun. You might go after the IDW style version, that one seems to connect with a lot of people, but I think if you're looking for a brainstorm that fits with the other Titans Returns guys, this mold is good. Even if you get the redecos, I think this is a great toy. There's no denying to the study and conclusion that damn he's fine! <laughs> couple. Mario and Peach? No. Link and Zelda? No. Edward and Scissorhands? No. Chrome Dome and Rewind? Where's that reality show? I love the idea of Chrome Dome and Rewind in the comics being a couple. They're just so adorable together. Glad Titans Returns justified the partners by bringing them both new toys. Works a lot better than Blast Off and Nonslut. This is forever burned in my brain. But going from his original character, Chrome Dome appreciated his life as a programmer, but then the Decepticon Nation attacked. After which, he wanted to move on to upgrade his fellow members to think a step ahead, only to end up engineering weapons of destruction. Styler, his Titan Master, and possibly third wheel, tries to bring Chrome Dome out of his shell more often. They try to work on each other to help one another, with an understandable bond between them. Titans Returns brings these two back, so let's take a look at the toy. Styler, awesome name by the way, is molded in mostly red with a brown torso. No distinct paint, but the mold, aside for the head on the back, is the exact same as Brainstorm's Teslor and Blur's Hyperfire. There's more taken from the two main figures, and we'll spot them throughout. Same articulation and same tabs and ports to attach to canopies, pegs, and workable weapons. Chrome Dome transforms into a futuristic muscle car decked out in brown, tan, and a splash of red as well. There's some nice paint on the hood and blue painted headlights sneaking in there. The color scheme could have been a mess or just dull, but I think there's a good balance. Just wish it was more consistent, mainly this patch here where the brown's too thin and it shows a visible tan border crack on the side. Other side seems to be fine. This really does feel like a badass 80s representation of a future car, adapting with new technology attached throughout the model, giving it this very boxy and crazy style. I mean, the back looks like an updated DeLorean from Back to the Future. Styler, we have to go back. To the future? To GameStop. 
Odd choice to have the wheels in transparent plastic, would like something more flashy, but fits the personality. And hey, a nice sized Autobot symbol this time around, at least he takes pride in who he is. You can open the canopy, but without modifying, it's a struggle to get a handle of. You'll likely have to bring out the arms to grab it, but it's on a double hinge and the Type Master has an awesome ride. He's got holes on the side to attach weapons, or you can combine both of them and using the tabs, attach it to the top. You can also add the Type Master on top and don't mess with us. Chrome Dome is smart, but clearly shows a little attitude with this pretty impressive and imposing car. Slick for speed, but mean in a great way. Robot mode. If you've caught on, you may have noticed that Chrome Dome's transformation is similar to the Combiner Wars Dead End. Despite speculation, Chrome Dome is a completely brand new mold, but the fused result presents a pretty decent product. I mean, the toy feels a bit more chunky with the legs and torso, not to mention, I think the colors for the feet and lower legs should be reversed, but I'm not picky. Generations can change things as long as what they're representing doesn't get lost, and I think they did a fine job. The head looks closer to the IDW traditional style with the nice, almost bat wing shaped ears, orange bow mask, and blue eyes. Not really into the bright red block, just doesn't really flow. There's also an alternative release for the Hasbro figure with the same head used for the Takara mold, which to me represents more of the original toy form. Hooray for options! Did someone say articulation? Ball jointed head, ball joint shoulders, rotation below, elbow bend, waist rotation, ball joint hips, rotation below, knee joint, and foot joint. Posability is average, I'm satisfied with the additional foot movement, but what I find really intriguing is the reuse of certain parts. Other than and the base Titan Master figure, the upper legs and kneecaps come from the Brainstorm and Blur mold. Not enough to be considered a remold, but recycling is cool! Fun fact, did you know that I used to use Chrome Dome for size comparisons? Hey, he makes it look good! Let's take a look at the weapons! Once again, from the same toys, Chrome Dome reuses the same basic blaster in bright red. In addition, he also comes with a longer rifle. Even though they're not the same, it somewhat reminds me of the original toy. The longer one has a port on the top, so when you attach the weapon, it hides the opening, which is cool, but if you stack the weapons and attach it properly, this doesn't look like fun. You can attach it to the shoulder, so that's good, or plug it from the side of the gun. Can we fix it? Perhaps. If you're a fan of Chrome Dome, then I'd say you'll be just perfectly fine picking this up. As a toy, it's really not problematic. If anything, it's more basic, but the fact it's actually him gives them bonus points. Paint apps are fine, coloring is good, and I'm totally happy adding this guy to my collection. But if you have no connection to him, then it's pretty easy to miss out. However, I don't think there's any regrets with this toy. The power of the red thong will consume you. You've seen Highbrow, now get ready for something better! The Big Highbrow Deluxe Blu-ray Edition! Highbrow hangs out with some pretty smart bots, but their intellect is lackluster by comparison to Highbrow's... well... intellect. It really is admirable, but his incredible mind is too much for you to comprehend. Typical toxic SJW response. This pompous attitude is questionable when partnered and bonded to someone almost completely different to that personality, Zort, formerly Gort with the best name change, who is a low-life ladies' man. No matter their differences, they've come back in Titan's Returns. So with that, how's the toy? The Titan Master Zort, aka Tiny Beachcomber, is a pretty simple little figure with blue limbs, head, and gray torso, with a simple silver line for the visor. Head on the back, just like the others, same articulation and same ports for the canopy piece posts and modified weapons. The main figure highbrow transforms into a futuristic dual rotor helicopter and I'm just not sure what to think about it. I like certain areas and shapes, but you could tell it's a robot. Oh, I exceed in any conceivable way. Your mind cannot fathom my absolute perfection. 
Why can't I see your fucking arms and legs? I don't really mind. A lot of it does catch my attention with just how everything fits together. I do like the gray sides between a main body of blue, and the red is a nice accent color, though the stripes needed an additional coat. You know, I never caught on to this cheat until now, but you'll notice that the back feels chunky, mostly due to the fact that it's the legs and feet. However, the details suggest that he has pretty thin wings, and below are intakes. I do like how smooth the top is, but I also like the front for being so busy. Ah, I'm so confused about my feelings! Speaking of the top, I think my biggest problem is the rotor blades that, once spun, will more than likely clash into themselves as they're on the same level and way too close. It's like discount Beyblades. Throwing in the Titan Master, I must say the transparent cockpit looks wonderful in this cherry red, pretty traditional in the helicopter style, and I think the gunner is a nice touch. You do have one flip out landing gear on the front, but where's the rest? Well, you can attach the guns to the wings using the gray tab, and mold it in, you'll find two other landing wheels. I think the guns really add some needed firepower, and looks great. Glad they're mirrored too, but even without them, looks like the tip of the wings are battle ready. And this... Definitely the weakest alt mode of the group, not sure if it's an upgrade from the original that had something more consistent, but really, it gets the job done, and that's alright. Robot mode... Robot mode was probably conceptualized first, and it shows how much cleaner he's gotten. Most of what remains of the helicopter moves out of the way, and in doing so, the cockpit and rotors can clash. <laughs> to its credit, it's got some sweet boots ready to grip the ground, some detail in the arms to keep it from being boring, and the torso has a fascinating flow with multiple components. You can change things up and open the chest a little, could be a reference, but it also doesn't really do anything else, so... what's the point. He's got a nice metallic gray boxy helmet with nice shades, skin of the kid from the chocolate factory after becoming the fruit, and I swear there's a smug look in there. I'm both upset and aroused. Did someone say articulation? Ball jointed head, hinge joint, ball joint shoulders, rotation below, elbow bend, hips out and in, forward and back, rotation below, and knee joint. Posing is fair, however the head has too much wiggle with a weak tabbing system inside, making it frustrating to turn. And the wrists don't lock in. There's a stopping point, but it mostly gives you a general idea where to stop. Let's take a look at the weapons. The figure includes two blasters mirrored from each other. If it wasn't for the wrist not locking in, and if the peg was maybe a bit tighter, this would be fun. You could also combine them for the double ice cream swirl machine, and add a tight master inside for for the adventures! If you didn't know, some of the parts are shared with him and Scourge, like the inner joint in the upper arms, some other joints, and upper legs. I'm surprised by how different these toys are, however. Alone, he's fine, but together with his fellow Autobots, Ooh, this is where the team shines. None of them really take over the other. They seem to form an awesome squad, feeling unique in some ways, but come together to make an impressive boy band. I dig the iPod symbol now on his butt, and the wings, though hollowed out, you can add some weapons and make him look larger, which allows him to assert dominance against the plebeians. Highbrow isn't the most exciting of the group, but that doesn't make him bad. He's just an average figure, so if you're huge into highbrow, I think you'll be fine with this. The robot mode is the superior look. If you don't mind the alt mode and a few of the quirks, it's really not so bad. Totally wouldn't pay scalper price for it, but something to look into. Average, but clearly the betterest at average. Hey. SO THE FUCK DOWN! I can't give you an exact answer on who's my personal favorite 1986 main Autobot, but if I had to guess, I think Blur has the most energetic personality. Light on his feet, and a super fast talker thanks to his record-breaking voice actor, the Micro Machines guy. In the Titans Returns, some of the former Target Masters are now Titan Masters, which is the same for Hyperfire, formerly Haywire, because it's the gimmick, roll with it. But with that, 
How's the toy? Hyperfire, the Titan Master itself, is exactly the same mold as the ones from Chrome Dome and Brainstorm. While molded in this almost sparkly blue, the paint apps with silver, black boots, and light blue in the face is a nice change of the norm. Heads on the back, same articulation, tabs and ports on the feet, they're all the fucking same! Blur transforms into the Sonic Mobile, a futuristic car built for the casual drive down a safe street, or while sitting still in a traffic jam. Oh sorry, I meant fast. <laughs> The alt mode completely fits the character, with the narrow head shape, this teardrop shaped fin, and rockets jetting out of the back. They don't call him the secondary blue blur for nothing. It's just so hard to hold this and keep it still, watch. <laughs> The majority is a single color of molded plastic, which feels a little dull, it's missing that excitement, but it does have some lighter blue on the front, and what is that? Smells like lilac. Type Master can pilot the vehicle. I hope he's prepared for ludicrous speed. And you can add the weapon to the bottom. Speaking of the bottom, well, shit. I've got that blue song stuck in my head. Dimension Blur is blue. You can remove the front section, which that doesn't look right. You can even flip out the stand and plug in the Type Master for battle sled mode. Oh, and you could do this because why not? This sharp look cuts through the wind to become the fastest thing imaginable. There really is no one like him, except for maybe Sonic. No matter how many rockets you put on anime and Bumblebee. So far, this is pretty good, but what of the robot mode? Here's Speedy Man McGee. This little Autobot is so fast, it's utterly inconceivable. This energetic machine deserves a style that can catch up to his quick personality. So why does he look so damn boring? The molding is perfect between Brainstorm, I'm not even sure which figure was designed first. But aside from the paint apps with the legs, light blue in the elbows, and some paint in the chest, there's so much of this singular color, there's nothing breaking it up, even the dark blue fades in. The Takara figure gives this nice cartoon color scheme, so many different things, giving him so much personality. Apparently I heard this is based on the original toy, but does it have to be so lifeless? For a Type Master, it's got the right shape for the face, perfectly executed, and you even get a little pull-out fin at the top. Too bad it doesn't lock in place, it usually folds back during play. Did someone say, ARTICULATION! Ball jointed head, shoulders out and in, forward and back, rotation below, elbow bend, wrist rotates, waist rotates, ball jointed hips, rotation below, knee bend, and foot moves. You can get some pretty decent poses, but everything is just... All I'm seeing is blue. I was gonna get the Takara one, but someone got me this anyways, and, well, I wasn't too keen on it until I was able to touch it in the all-over parts, and the feel saves it. I can't stay mad, I'm just having too much fun. He might be a mess of color, but if there was ever a good-looking mess of color, I think we found the resource. Ooh. Let's take a look at the weapons. He comes with a giant shield, formerly the front of the car, clashes into the shoulder, but does give him additional color. He's also got the same weapon as Chrome Dome and Brainstorm, but decked out in silver. You can also combine the weapons, plug them into the fist, and he can live his dreams of being a turret. First sound wave as a lamppost, now this. He's a skinny guy, right? Oh, damn. I think I figured it out. Blurry Allen is always trying to outrun his grandma, who's always offering a sandwich. I know I was on about the color, and I'm sure someone's gonna say, Just get the Takara, you cringy fuck! And to that I say, well, again, I was given this, and it was cheaper anyways. To my surprise, I actually don't mind it as much. Once you get a handle of him, you just understand why this works. I totally recommend the Takara Deco more so with this figure, but if you just want a blur toy, this should do fine. Great mold, fun toy, and I'm very happy with the figure. There, a blur review, and I didn't bring up Mexican Mouse. Arriba, you fucker!
I think there's something wrong here. In some incarnations, Alphatron was a wise mentor to Optimus Prime, basically building him up to become the Prime we all know. In Generation 1, he even reformatted a damaged Orion Pax to the iconic form. He would also become a guard to the ancient Vector Sigma. The original pretender landmine, now used as a shell for the Prime host, was sort of a thrill seeker, and although his original job was pretty dull, he prefers to be in a real-life adventure film. One's a thrill seeker, the other's a wise guardian. Isn't that a sitcom? The pair joined together in the power of the Prime's toy line, with Landmine now becoming a decoy suit to Alpha Trion. Alpha Trion is a pretty basic Type Master style base figure. Very minimal paint applications only in the face, same basic articulation and port, so there's nothing much to discuss. That is until you transform it into the core mode and, oh, pretty so... diamonds, so mesmerizing, so glorious. You can use this to power up or decorate your power of the Prime's armor, feet, and other additional areas, or plug it to the Titan returns toy and full power. Starting off on gun mode, you may have noticed that this uses the same parts from a previous decoy suit. The arms, entire back, and gun are all reused from Metal Hawk. The admittedly phallus gun has some pretty decent detail, though it doesn't compare to the metallic shade of the original. You can use it with any figure adapting the 5mm port, but uh... There's a guy underneath. But hey, if Alpha Trine wants to help, you can pour him on top and... Whoa, I wonder what destruction they can accomplish. <laughs> really a basic gimmick, but it does have some use with the larger figures. And you can move up the peg and it's a baton. Getting into robot mode is pretty simple, and the robot itself isn't very exciting. I mean, except for his belt made of cement because he's just that strong. Paint apps are fine. I think the yellow is a good choice. Looks like a construction vehicle gained a form, but then he also put a vacuum on his head. Now you can probably tell that the entire front is the only new part to Metal Hawk. You could also probably catch on that it's mostly painted in yellow despite the back being a solid color which makes things kinda off. But wait, what's the point? If there's solid yellow pieces molded in this color, why is this painted? Who cares? You can open it up and add the Prime Master inside. What's cool is his face fills in the gap on the helmet, so that gives you more of a reason to swap it out, if not for a minor option. Wait, where's the bulldozer mode? Who is this? The arms can move just by one joint, and the gun can be removed from the hinge and added to the hand for I'm helping mode. What else is there to say? If you like Landmine or Alpha Trion, or like Pretenders in general, you might get a kick out of this. And there's sort of an earthy, bulky style fit for the name Landmine. But if you don't care, there's nothing missing from it. Can't say it's bad, it just depends if it catches your eye in any case. Simple, but there's other figures that'll probably be more interesting. In regards to the helmet, I'm sorry to disappoint, I don't think this is the Juggernaut. Listen, only you can bring both worlds together. One of the land, one of the sea. Go, be their king. Alchemist Prime has a deep connection to the elements, some bound to our understanding of reality, and some we may not truly understand. He does have a strange ability to briefly change elements into metal. However, he's always curious in observing creation and evolution. He's a nice guy, knows everyone's name, and is sometimes set as a bartender. Speaking of, you might want to keep an eye on a certain Cyberverse character who might have a deeper connection than let on. Hopefully he could keep his decoy suit character calm, though Submarauder is easy to burst into a tantrum-filled rage. In Power of the Primes, these two work together to use the spark of the Prime. Alchemist is the same as all the other Prime Masters, with the former Titan Master build, but in Power of the Primes, you can unlock imaginary abilities with the users and decorate. Different imaginary things could happen depending on the combinations. Funny, with an exception of the yellow face, his wave mate shares a pattern of primary color to gray parts. He's got solid blue and gray pieces, same articulation, same ports to attach to modified weapons, armor, and random spots, and in core mode, he brings out the the power of cookies and cream, the temptation. Do not eat. The decoy suit, based on the pretender Sun Marauder, transforms into a guy with a giant fork for a head. Given his aquatic theme, a trident as a weapon makes sense, but the base figure is not helping. I feel like the guns can have a chunky look without breaking the imagined realism because it's a gun go all out. 
but a trend with this just looks like poor craftsmanship. Just looks like a swordfish that got close to nuclear waste. There is a weapon peg on the back on the joint so you can attach this to a figure straight ahead or pointed upwards depending on your preferred style. Flipping the arms forward might give you a better look as well. But hey, Alchemist Prime can attach on top and I don't know what they can do with this combination but I'm sure it's cookies and cream power. Do not eat. I know these are basic little toys and the weapon is just a throw and I'll give it credit for going a different route that fits the theme and the trident idea is cool but the execution feels awkward. Fold down the trident and flip back the peg and while these are essentially blocky characters there's something fishy about this guy and yeah it's a compliment. Just look at the scaly texture on his head divided by a huge fin on top to attract mates, the fish out of water face, and purple belt that will make mermaid men jealous. Throughout the figure you'll find some very fitting texturing. Even when you flip up the trident you'll see some hoses or wiring. Speaking of this you can detach the trident and plug it into the hand. Either he's challenging Aquaman or he's eyeing your salad. As as usual, you can open them up and add the Prime Master inside. It's alright referencing the gimmick of the original Pretenders, but the only gaps you'll get are these little holes that I'm hoping aren't barnacles. Or would that be cooler? And if you flip out the peg, fish on a stick! Again, do not eat the wildlife. I don't know if I can get behind the trident mode. I like the idea, but I just feel pulled back because of the chunkiness that's seemingly unavoidable. But it doesn't ruin the figure in robot mode. And hey, Alchemist Prime? That's good too. The fish theme really brings him out of the water to shine. He's a great little trinket that's adorable and charming all around. I'd say if you can find it, maybe this is a set you should grab. Because it's a good toy. Good. A worthy opponent to Lego Aquaman. That probably was dumb of me because my laptop's right here. I'm so glad we get some equality with Transformers, especially with Moonracer. I mean, look at the balance of actual figure next to the crap on the back. See? Plus is plus. Math? Two sides of coin? Equality. Moonracer is pretty airheaded at times, a little clumsy, even getting caught in a trap, but there's still a warrior spirit in herself. Might not always make the right choice, but her heart is in the right place. Like Sayori, but without the... Moving on. In Transformers, Moonracer was first shown in the original cartoon, however throughout most of the franchise she never had a figure. There was a Green RC exclusive, but that was a phony. It was until Power of the Primes where the optimistic lady showed herself in figure form. Moonracer transforms into a Cybertronian car that's shaped like the cartoon, but takes the liberty to add new detail to make it more investing. Such as the shaft shape that's demonetized, someone's torso, and hands! Despite the, well, imperfections, let's say, there is some decent detail found throughout. I think the shape is good, the blue windscreen is a nice touch, I love the colors, and the detail in the headlights look fine as hell. There's a porthole on the back to attach the prime armor, because if there's one thing this needs, it's more length. You can also attach weapons to the side of the back, and the front, though it points slightly downwards, so that's not good. The arms doesn't lock into place too well, more or less just rest into the tabs. And I can't avoid the unfortunate kibble seen mostly from the back. But I just enjoy the overall style that it just fades into. This is certainly not for everyone, but I'll give it this. The tits are aerodynamic. There's even a twisty joint in the middle, so if a wheel's off the ground, you can adjust it to a proper level. Also for those curvy Hot Wheels tracks, ooh, how fun. I'm assuming the alt mode had to make sacrifices for a number of reasons, which I'll get into. I'm not bothered by the result and I can't stay mad, but I can clearly see why this could get on people's nerves. I just find it unique. Robot mode. point you need to know on the transformation. When you open up the torso, make sure the rotation joint on the waist attached to the canopy is on top. Otherwise, you will not be able to open up the torso and flip out the head. Kyrie, why are you acting so chill? Moonracer's looking damn fine, but there's just something really off. Oh yeah, holy shit, that kibble! I generally don't really care about kibble, things have to go somewhere, but there's a limit. There's a few reasons why this happened, one of which could be that they wanted to keep the figure 
with this figure. So they just shoved everything off to the side, which I don't think is a good excuse. Another reason could be that the original character never got a toy and was just in the cartoon, but no doubt they can make changes to at least spread this around. We can rebuild her. We have the technology but we don't have Masterpiece budget. I think another reason that might be missed more often is that in Power of the Primes, the deluxe figures also transform into arms and legs. So she would have to incorporate the port in the torso, as well create a stable leg. I'm not saying these are good reasons, or at least excusable to give her a better rating, but I had to comment on it. However, the base figure does look nice, she does pose as well, and she can keep her stance with the junk in the trunk. Some fans prefer leaving the canopy section down to create a tailcoat. And while that's a good option, to me she just looks like she's got an escape pod in her ass. Is that Powerglide's fetish? <laughs> I can't stay mad with that face, the colors are wonderful, it's molded very well, and just has this light personality, though I get a sense that she's not taking shit from anyone. Did someone say, ARTICULATION? Ball jointed head, hinge joint neck, ball joint shoulders, ball joint elbows, waist rotation, ball joint hips, <coughs> knee joint, foot forward to back, and slight side to side. Also this head pops off way too easily. Posability is fine if you can balance half the weight of the figure on the back, and the detailing is good aside from <laughs> But what I really like is the colors with the bluish green, white, and faded purple mixed with the trans blue and yellow detail, and there's a clear style choice. Let's take a look at the weapons as the sharpshooter Moonracer comes with an awesome black blaster with a scope peg at the bottom and one on the back for that's not how you hold a gun, that's how you prepare for a whacking! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The backpack has a peg hole so you can attach the weapon for storage because if there's one thing she needs, it's more kibble. She also comes with the Prime Armor exclusive in matching colors to the figure, which is wonderful. It can tap it in the chest for I don't think she's pregnant, I think she just wants attention. You could plug it into the hand with the peg or onto the side of the arm. As with the gimmick, you can take off the clear piece and add a Prime Master to power up the figure. The clear component can be added to the hand as a gun or vacuum. Power Glide? What are you doing? Paraglide, no! Don't do it! What about Historia? Paraglide, my monetization! I don't blame him. I mean, you see the thighs on this thing? I might be sexist. Ah, oh, shit, she fell over. Could someone help her off? In leg mode, you'll have to provide your own foot, but if you want a leg with fist for kneecaps, do we have a figure for you? Oh. I think it would be fine if I wasn't too concerned about the tabs at the bottom that slip in and don't lock in. You have to keep an eye on it, because if things are off, it won't slide in right, and you'll have to deal with the mess. Unless you have a remold or maybe swoop to even things out, the thin and awkward shape of the arm mode feels very abnormal. I do like the coloring going right to the hand, but there's a slight curve to the peg hole that makes the wrist look weird. I will say, with the majority of the arms, the upper legs are pretty much an obvious glaring point. I get why they had to do this to keep articulation, but thanks to the canopy, there's a better flow to it. It's hard to pinpoint exactly what my thoughts are in recommending this figure. There's things I like in the style, but there's certain points that needed to be redesigned, not to mention the mass of kibble. This is not for everyone, and I completely understand both sides. I'll just give you my take. I think she needs some work, but personally, I'm pretty happy. A lot of the problems shouldn't be looked over, but I'm really not that bothered. I'm fine with the alt mode, and if the base robot is fine, then I don't really care about the kibble in general. I guess Paraglide likes a woman with a little junk on her. And he cheats with the human. The show's weird. popular commercial quote. I saw this boat in half. In the 1986 Transformers film, continuing from the cartoon, the Autobots and Decepticons came across Junkion, a planet filled with stuff long forgotten. But another man's trash is another man's treasure according to its civilization, led by Rekgar. To sum it up, you know the loud half-hour infomercials late at night you kept on the TV because he didn't want to bother with the clicker? Well, Rekgar talks like that all the time. Honestly, sometimes it's hard to know exactly what he's saying, but that's part of its charm. Empower the Primes, Rekgar returns with a... Ah, Walgreens exclusive, because everyone loves that! To its credit, it was in EB Games, but I never found it. Thanks to the Dabber Supreme for sending this figure, I really do appreciate it. This two-wheel- 
This two-wheel television set, for those who still know what that is, transforms into a bike. But wait! Doesn't he transform into a garbage truck like an animated? Look, not every garbage truck in Transformers is going to be Retgar. It's Steve Buscemi voicing Day Trader. Get over it. Given the original style, but if you're thinking this form is familiar, that's because this is a repaint of the Combiner Wars Groove figure. Funny because not only is this not the first time this character was repainted in Generations, but this is the second time coming off a Groove mold. Well, it's going to be hard to discuss this without comparing it to the reveal the Shields design, which was a completely brand new mold for the Junkions. While I think the dirt bike certainly fits the character, in all honesty, this feels closer to representing the old toy. The boxy aesthetic and wide windshield seems pretty fitting, and even though the arms are right there, the original had just legs. So while the mold seems to sit comfortably in its skin, the deco seems a bit boring. I mean, this is nitpick territory, but he's covered in this burnt orange in most of the body. There are other colors in the mix, but you can add some tan or something. He's supposed to look like scrap, have fun. If everything goes right, the wheel with the wonderful red rims roll incredibly well. If only, oh. Well, that's okay, Rekgar has a kickstand. Also, you can tilt the front wheel side to side, but at the risk of breaking those bars, I'd rather keep it in a static pose. Now being a deluxe, this bike seems out of scale, but the benefit is that the original character was from another planet entirely, where the same people could ride each other in the most filthy orgy. The original Reveal the Shields toy could do this with duplicate molds with adapting tabs. But it's a little more awkward with this. It is a groove remold after all, so I didn't really expect it to work. However, if you have a bone crusher sized thigh gap, you can create the best anime crossover. Now you can add the weapons to the sides, top or back, but this is where things kind of break apart. Groove came with the hand foot guns of Combiner Wars, so the prime armor fits in fine, but the saw blade was used from another figure entirely. We'll get into that later, but it does have a clip you can softly attach to the handlebars, or you can try to use the peg, but this throw-in weapon was never originally made meant to incorporate with this figure. What I prefer to do is plug the prime armor on the back, fold up the saw blade, and combine the two. The prime armor flows with the back, adding the spikes, giving it something wild. And the saw stores like on Ray's speeder bike. No one suspects a bike with a pizza cutter. So while this isn't as exciting as you may hope for with the wreck guard, it is a surprise just how well the idea fits the mold. I think this is a pretty fair repaint that can easily be looked over from the older incarnation of a deluxe toy. Robot mode. In robot mode, I'm fine calling this a wreck car. Maybe a little cleaned up by comparison, and I wish the tire could be used as a shield, but that's wishful thinking. Though it's missing those hard nips. Now that's just in poor taste. I do like certain areas that come together to fit with this status. The arms and upper legs look like they were built from scratch, with certain parts coming off from who knows where. So far, this is the only junkie on use in the Combiner Wars mold, but thanks to repro labels, you can take a few extra wreck cars and convert them into different characters. Just look at the one with the port head! That is genius! Don't get me wrong, I like the head. The distinct features give off the proper aura, like the windshield shape, handlebars, and who could forget the facial hair? But it just looks so small compared to the body, and the slick silhouette might not fit with the overall look of the body. The result looks like a cosplayer who built the body himself, but the helmet is an obvious store-bought purchase. Did someone say, articulation? Ball jointed head, ball joint shoulders, rotation below, elbow bend, waist rotation, ball joint hips, rotation below, and knee bend. Posing is fine, but if you got groove, you know what you're getting into. You can't get him to write the legends form, but it looks like a weird adult in Walmart trying the kids' bikes. Let's take a look at the weapons. He comes with the common prime armor piece, reused as the combiner hands, properly swapped from the combiner wars mold. You can replace this silver block to add a prime master, and you can add it to underneath this arm, into the hand, or right on the chest. Right on the chest. Right on the chest! It doesn't go in the chest. You can also use the Great Block as an additional weapon, or vacuum, and he also comes with the saw blade reused from the very original Reveal the Shields toy. Kinda surprised they didn't just build a new one, considering it doesn't really work too well with the toy. You can't clip it into the hand midway, all you can do is add it to the bottom. It's serviceable, but not what I'd prefer. You can leave it in pizza cutter or aggressive pizza cutter mode. In leg mode? Yep, it certainly is a leg, has a massive kneecap formed from the front of the bike, and you'll need to provide a foot, but yeah, 
It's standard. In our mode, I personally prefer it. The wheel feels like a reference to the original Redguard, but that's just my mind telling me things I want to hear. You can flip up the wheel if you like, there's a double elbow joint, and thanks to the long weapon, you can attach this to the bottom thumb, and he's doing it! He's really holding a pizza cutter! So you're probably thinking, hey, what's with all the talking? Just make stupid jokes, you gay! Well, there's a lot to unpack here. I don't think the energy is all here, and a lot of the components, like the weapons, doesn't really translate well to the complete figure. However, for a repaint, I'm surprised how the base figure actually does work. It's gonna be an overlooked exclusive, but if you're missing out on a Rekgar or want an additional mold for a Junkion team, this is fine. Not a flawless toy, but I guess this being scraps of older toys is somehow poetically fitting. Special thanks to the Dabber Supreme for sending this figure. I appreciate it. If you can't get into this toy, that's fine but if it's because they put facial hair on the robot, your overlooking judgment disappoints me. Honor the facial hair! Did someone call a fireman? That's my knowledge. Well, things are about to heat up. I don't think people call firemen to heat things up, and I question your profession. With no second thought about his own safety, Inferno will dive headfirst into a raging fire and onto the rescue. He prefers to fight against the Decepticons, but if the aftermath has a blaze out of control, Inferno is the first one to control it. His lack of fear is rather looked up to, and with his friend Red Alert, these two are on the call. One's a hot-headed hero, the other never breaks the code of law. Together they are Red Inferno. In Power of the Primes, Inferno returns to the scene, taking on the action with a new repainted figure. Inferno transforms into a firefighting truck, repainted directly from Combiner Wars Hotspot with no mold changes shown. The truck leads the block look for a more stretched approach. Throughout the truck, you'll spot some pretty distinct detail, like the horns near the front, light bars, storage for equipment, a front windshield similar to movie Sentinel Prime, and a face looking at you and it doesn't feel normal. The front section and ladder is perfectly fine, but the midsection of the truck feels oddly flat. It's like Joe getting run over by a tank and looking like a squished tube of toothpaste. The ladder is amazingly long. I get a good amount of joy just playing around with this. There's a rotation, a joint at the base, and joint at the top. Some good paint detail with the silver and black, and the white over the black makes it pop. There's even a logo hiding in the painted part of the base. The colors in general is so fun. I don't mind the blue of the original, but there's something magical about the traditional red. It's like Santa came by to spread joy and put out fires. While not directly incorporated, you can add a Titan Master or Prime Master figure in the ladder, or sit one in the bucket. Doesn't plug into anything, but can't be worked with. You can plug the guns in different places, on the truck itself, on the rotating base, or up on the ladder like mobile fire hoses. You can additionally take the Prime Armor feet, plug it here, and we're just gonna leave that off to the side. You can also transform the combined head and put out the fire with a disappointed look. Fire truck mode isn't a chunky block, but at least the arms are hidden better than the original toy. It's very colorful and just brings out the child in me screaming to play with the fire truck. Robot mode. Inferno is, well, we're in the hotspot mold, but gains a new head sculpt fit for the name. He doesn't have his head wings? What the hell? No fire hose hand? And where's the chunky style we all love? Well, I gotta tell you, and this is gonna be tough, I think I prefer this Inferno. <laughs> I mean, the Classics is always going to represent Inferno for me, and the Universe Classics figure did a wonderful job, not to mention the more expensive and clean Masterpiece toy, but this one just looks so cleaned up. I mean, he's got a giant ladder on his back, but I almost like that. Axe as a third leg, or you could totally bring it over the shoulder. But what's the point of a ladder on his shoulder? Why the fuck not? The head is pretty well made, totally gives the Inferno style, and those eyes look like they're ready to head into action. Did someone say, articulation? <laughs> Head rotate, shoulders out and in, out and in again, forward and back, rotation below, elbow bend, hips out and in, forward and back, rotation below, and knee joint. Posability is fine, the feet can unlock so you might be able to do something with it, which, wait, wasn't this on his chest? 
Oh well. You also have to make sure that the joints on the knees are positioned properly. There's a bunch of hinges that goes up sideways and up again. Let's take a look at the weapons. He comes with the exact same guns used from Hotspot, which can combine front to back for an extended weapon. And the feet are, well, you slap them on the guns, flip up the peg, and that's... why? I'll just pretend it's a powerful fire hose, and inside here is the water tanks. These pieces are molded the exact same as the Alita 1. And while I don't really mind this combination, he looks like he's going full blast on those fires. There is an alternative. This gets overlooked if I were to guess, because by the time this figure released, people already knew how to transform it. But what you can do with these is in the instructions. All you have to do is plug the feet on the back of the shoulders, attach the weapons on top, and now I'm completely fine with these feet pieces because you get shoulder fire response power. By this point, this is where Inferno gets really fun. He just looks absolutely prepared to spray kittens, rescue fires, rescue kittens, spray fires. I've got to bring up the stickers, which I usually hate because they flake off and feel off from the figure, but there's a limited amount, they look fine, and it was the last to have these before the next line. Even the hands are painted, mm. oh, that's class. You can add Prime Masters, but he also comes with an enigma of combination that you can add to the Prime piece, and who cares? Pretty awesome, but it doesn't stop there. It's almost certain most people are probably not going to leave it in combined mode. Inferno never took part in this. It is a running gimmick, and as pointed out by the Transformers Slag podcast, this might be an overlooked reference. I'll provide a link below of their video analyzing this, but it might be a reference to Fire Chief. It's pretty obvious that it's a repaint of Hotspot at this point, but the colors are so vibrant with the white and silver chest, really stoic, and they chose to make the crown completely in red. Maybe it's like a fireman's helmet. There's no specific combination of figures I could find except an example in the instructions. And I don't think this set really has a name, but I gotta say this seems more solid than the original pre-mold. Tabs in the chest seem to hold, and he's just so handsome. You could take Legend's Rekgar on the chest. I'm not gonna do that because... Yeah. He does come with the feet. Yeah, are you shocked these are the feet? They hit them so well. Anyways, they have a rocking joint, and you can plug stuff onto the back. Siege Blast, anyone? You could also combine the weapons, and now he's ready to take on fires from the top shelf. Too bad the Enigma of Combination he comes with doesn't have a port on the figure. You'll have to add it to the Prime Armor, or... Does he need it? So what's my opinion, taking out the Masterpiece, because that's probably a league of its own. I think people will prefer one of the other designs of Inferno closer to the original. And I understand, and some people are just gonna see a red hotspot, but honestly, out of the three molds I currently have... This is the best one. The colors work, I feel they reworked some of the tabs and the quality improved, and I just think this figure did amazing. If you're okay with the figure implementing the embodiment of Inferno but aren't picky, this is great. There's a reason Sabertron did an article of this toy. And that's April's Autism Awareness Month for 2019. I thank you all for checking out this line of videos. I hope we can appreciate and accept people of all kinds. It means a lot. Remember, only you can prevent fire!